Part three of the Digital Technology Export to ASEAN Masterclass will explore the role of trade policy to facilitate digital trade across borders. For this session, we have Nick Williams, the Deputy State Director for the Queensland Office of the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, who will discuss DFAT's approach to digital trade, trade rules, DFAT's trade, digital trade strategy, as well as what the digital economy agreement between Australia and Singapore means for Australian tech businesses. Over to you, Nick. Hello, and thank you for the kind introduction. As mentioned, I will cover DFAT's digital trade agenda, and more broadly, Australia's approach to digital trade. Firstly, it's probably worthwhile asking the question, what is digital trade in the context of Australia's approach and international engagement? This question can preoccupy international discourse and be can become a thorny issue as different countries take different views, including on the difference between digital trade and, and electronic commerce. From Australia's perspective, we broadly take an open approach to the definition, preferring it not to be limited in scope or time. This is particularly important because digital trade issues develop very quickly so definitions, particularly where specific technologies might be referenced, can quickly become outdated. Australia also generally doesn't distinguish between digital trade and e-commerce, so you might find me using both terms today. Broadly, we can think about digital trade as including imports and exports of goods sold over the internet, including through e-commerce platforms, content, such as software, books, music, films, and applications, and digital, digitally enabled services, such as online consultancy services, legal services, and education. It also includes electronic facilitation of trading goods, such as through digital single windows and digital trade documents, and transmission of data across borders to support business activities and as a commodity, the focus on enabling trade is increasingly about data, given its centrality as an enabler of business and innovation. So why does digital trade matter to Australia? Modern trade is increasingly achieved through digital technology. The global economy is more connected and integrated than at any one point in history. And the use of digital technologies to enable trade is only going to become more important to Australia's economy. This reflects the broader economy where, once a niche sector, digital has become an essential and all pervasive element of the economy. As digital technologies and the internet drive economic growth, they are becoming the basic tools of business. Digital trade provides the opportunity for businesses to reach new consumers and markets. For SMEs, this is, very important. this is a very important development as this enables them, in many cases, to build their presence and customer base across the country and world instead of being confined geographically. It also lowers entry costs to the market and enables businesses to improve productivity, including through the use of technologies enabled by the flow of data across borders including through access to lower cost technologies, such as cloud computing or centralized data processing. Digital trade also enables consumers to participate in new markets, increasing choice, and it can also bring benefits in the way of convenience and access to new products. Valuation of digital trade is a complex and dark art, and it is notoriously difficult to do. Work is being done internationally to develop more robust methodologies to measure digital trade, including in the OECD, but this work is in its infancy. Private consultancies have also undertaken the challenge, and while precise measurement can be difficult, it is certainly clear that digital trade is already important to the global and Australian economies and will only become more so. In 2016, global e-commerce just at the retail level, was already worth about US $2 trillion. It has been said it is contributing more to global GDP than growth in goods trade. For Australia, a 2018 report by consultancy Alpha Beta 
values the contribution of digital trade to Australia's economy at $43 billion. And the report shows that if digital goods and services were a sector, it would be Australia's fourth largest export sector, only after fuels and mining products, travel services, and agricultural products. The same report also estimates that digital exports will grow 210% by 2030, enabling almost $200 billion of economic value in Australia's domestic economy. Digital trade rules and why they are important. With modern business and commerce increasingly becoming digital, it is important to ensure that there are frameworks in place domestically and internationally to enable the digital trading modality. Digital trade rules provide certainty, stability, and build trust in the online environment, enabling innovation and growth. They also help counter rising global protectionism and support an open, secure, and free internet. More broadly, engaging in tri digital trade rule making supports Australia's national interest in a global rules-based order, which for a middle power like Australia is incredibly, incredibly important and from which we have benefited from substantially. Feedback from industry, businesses and consumers on digital trade, on digital trade rules is critical. Open consultations on digital trade issues is an important part of the Australian government's approach to ensuring that digital trade rule making remains relevant and reflective of what our Australian business and consumers want and need. The Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade has an open submissions process, including through our website for interested stakeholders to contact us and provide views on what digital trade issues are important to them. In the context of individual negotiations, such as free trade agreement negotiations, we also hold regular stakeholder consultation sessions. Our paper, The Future of Digital Trade Rules, sets out our thinking and provides information for stakeholders on what we are doing to help start the conversation on how well calibrated our current rules are and whether there are new issues that need rules to foster development of digital trade for the benefit of all stakeholders. As part of this process, but also more generally, we often reach out to stakeholders directly to hear their views. And, of, and events like today's are important for increasing awareness of the government's role in enabling digital trade internationally. Australia's approach to digital trade is set out in the digital trade chapter of Australia's international cyber engagement strategy. The strategy highlights the importance of shaping an environment for digital trade, such as harmonizing standards, enabling greater access to markets, trade facilitation and supporting regulatory cooperation, and promoting trade and investment in Australian goods and services. The Australian government's overall approach to digital trade is to shape an enabling international environment for digital trade that balances the protection of consumers and privacy with the facilitation of trade and investment. So how do we pursue Australia's interests? Internationally, we are playing a key role in creating the enabling environment for digital trade through negotiating international trade rules and architecture. Aside from what we negotiate in free trade agreements, we participate in a number of international forums to influence outcomes, such as APEC, the G20, and in the World Trade Organization, where we are leading e-commerce negotiations. Recognizing that we need to get the policy settings and rules right to capture the opportunities offered by digital trade, domestically, regionally, and globally, we look to put in place rules that create certainty and support the increasingly digital nature of business, while ensuring adequate protection for consumers. Achieving this balance between facilitating trade and creating trust in the online environment is a crucial objective for Australia. I will now move to look at some of the issues Australia pursues in these fora. 
As set, out, as set out in Australia's international cyber engagement strategy, the rules set out on this slide are typical rules that you will find in Australia's free trade agreements. These include paperless trading, electronic authentication, online consumer protection, online protection of personal information, and unsolicited commercial electronic messages, also known as spam. Most are directed at either direct trade facilitation or more indirectly building consumer confidence in the online environment, such as by protecting personal information and minimizing spam. This slide is a continuation of some of our key trade rules that we seek. These include custom duties on electronic transmissions, domestic regulatory frameworks or domestic electronic transaction frameworks, localization of computing facilities, cross-border transfer of information by electronic means, disclosure of source code and cooperation. More specifically, I'll take you through the form these rules have taken in some of our recent agreements. It should be noted that while the rules take a similar form or structure, depending on the parties involved, the commitment being made may differ. Paperless trading provisions are also common in our FTA practice and seek to ensure that trade administration is streamlined through electronic means. Clear feedback from Australian stakeholders is that paperless trading is key to moving goods across the border cheaper and easier. Australia sees benefits in ensuring customs administrations take documentation available, oh sorry, administrate, Australia sees benefits in ensuring customs administrations make documentation available electronically and do not reject import documentation for the sole reason they are provided in electronic form. This provides certainty to business and customs officials and streamlines trade administration in the context of the ongoing digitalization of trade. It is important to note that Australia's provisions on paperless trading provide flexibility for customs officials to be able to ask for paper copies of documents in particular circumstances. For example, where it is legally required or to ensure the effectiveness of the trade administrative process is not reduced. This slide sets out Article 13.4 on paperless trading under Australia's free trade agreement with Indonesia the Indonesia-Australia Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement, or also known as IACPA. As you will see, paragraph one is a best endeavours commitment to make all trade documents available online. Paragraph two is a strong commitment to accept trade documents online. And paragraph three is about working together to promote acceptance of trade documents online. On unsolicited commercial electronic messages or spam. Australia has domestic laws in place that require the consent of a recipient to receive spam or that require the senders of spam to provide a means to prevent the recipient of spam. Australia also provides avenues for recourse against suppliers of spam if these requirements are not met. Our FTA commitments in this area ensure parties have regulatory frameworks in place that protect consumers against unsolicited commercial electronic messages. And these are also important to build consumer trust in the digital environment. We use language that provides flexibility in how they wish to regulate spam. In Australia, we regulate through the Spam Act 2003, which covers commercial messages sent via email, SMS, MMS or instant messaging. Voice calls, including robocalls, are excluded as these are opt out via the do not call register. It does not limit unsolicited messages to business. The Spam, Spam Act prohibits unsolicited commercial messages that have an Australian link and are not designated commercial electronic messages unless they are sent with the express or inferred consent of the recipient. In other words, opt-in. 
It also requires the sender to include information or a mechanism to allow the recipient to stop future commercial electronic messages from the sender, as well as accurate sender information. There are civil penalty provisions for breaches of the SPAM Act with maximum penalties exceeding $2 million. This slide sets out Article 11.11 on unsolicited commercial electronic messages or SPAM under Australia's FTA with Hong Kong. Paragraph 1 ensures transparency of messages and commits parties to regulate unsolicited commercial messages through obligations on suppliers that they provide for recipients of such messages to opt out or that they require consent to send messages. Paragraph 2 ensures accountability and commits parties to enforcement of the commitment by providing avenues for recourse against suppliers of spam who do not meet these requirements. Now let's look at our FTA rules that allow cross-border movement of data while maintaining trust in the online environment and appropriate public policy space for governments. We include these rules as we do not want to see barriers for business, which limit their ability to participate in international trade. We know cross-border border data flows are the fastest growing component of world trade and generate a greater impact on global gross domestic product growth than the global trade in goods. Ensuring business has the flexibility to move data across borders and store data in locations that optimize competitiveness is a key to facilitating the realities of modern day trade. This flexibility improves business operations and performance and enhances innovation. We know the free flow of data flows can provide productivity improvements. And we know data flows are intrinsic to trade in virtual goods and services. For example, software, eBooks, and online advertising. They enable our other goods and services exports and the movement of finance, people, and ideas. Virtually every cross-border transaction has a digital element. Data flows are also important for consumers. The free flow of data provides consumers with access to valuable digital services from anywhere in the world, such as 24-7 IT tech support, access to international financial services, and access to interactive services that enable cutting edge medical devices, such as cochlear implants. But the free flow of data only works for business and consumers if trust in the online environment also exists. Whether large or small, business stakeholders acknowledge that both of these elements are necessary to support ongoing expansion of digital trade. This trust is built through measures a party has in place to protect personal information and public policy interests. This slide sets out Article 13.11 on cross-border transfer of information by electronic means under Australia's FTA with Indonesia, or IACFA. Paragraph one of the article, not listed on this slide, acknowledges that parties have their own regulatory frameworks to govern transfer of data, allowing parties to implement a framework that best suits them while meeting the obligations of the next two paragraphs on the slide. Paragraph two commits parties to allowing data to cross borders, but only when it is part of general business processes. Paragraph three is the exceptions. It allows parties to prohibit the transfer of data in certain circumstances that meet a public policy objective. However, we do believe these requirements should be kept to a minimum. Overly broad or vague data localization requirements can impose an unreasonable burden, particularly on SMEs. Next, let's look at the rules that prohibit local data storage requirements while still providing appropriate public policy space for governments. Rules preventing requirements for localization of computing facilities are particularly important due to the widespread use of offshore service and cloud computing. Such services allows companies to be more flexible and agile, 
giving them the ability to enter new markets more quickly. Data localization requirements can also be extremely costly to business, as such requirements often mean, mean companies have to build or maintain data centers in every country in which they operate. Ensuring unnecessary localization requirements are not imposed helps business to maximize their efficiency and competitiveness. Stakeholders have told us that broad sweeping local Broad sweeping data localization requirements impose significant financial and administrative costs and can risk major disruptions to data flows. This slide sets out Article 14.13 on location of computing facilities under the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership, or CPTPP, which Australia is a party. Like rules on data flows, Paragraph one gives parties freedom in how they implement commitments. Paragraph two ensures a party cannot make a business use or locate computing facilities in that party in order to conduct business. Paragraph three is the exceptions. Australia is currently negotiating a digital economy agreement with Singapore. In addition to the core trade commitments we generally seek, we are looking at a range of new commitments on emerging areas that I thought might provide a nice insight into where our digital trade future might be headed. First, the DEA will include a new commitment for Australia in the field of open government data. This is inspired by some recent US trade agreements. The provision doesn't seek to make governments make any additional pu data public but what it does do is provide that when government makes data public, it should do so in a machine readable and open format to maximize utility for business and research institutions. This is consistent with the Australian government data policy and is certainly a sign of things to come. We expect the DEA will also include a provision on digital identity, committing us to promote interoperability, international frameworks, and implementing use cases for the mutual recognition of respective digital identities. Artificial intelligence is another key topic in this area, and our commitments on this will likely be focused on internationally recognized principles for AI governance, as well as sharing best practices and promoting common or harmonized AI frameworks. We are very hopeful that the data flows and localization provisions in the DEA will apply to financial services, because financial services is carved out of most of our e-commerce chapters, except in the case of our free trade agreement with Hong Kong. Finally, for the first time, we have included RegTech and FinTech cooperation in our agreement with Singapore, in recognition of how competitive our Australian industry providers are internationally and how we are leading the way on policy agendas like open banking or consumer data rights, and that we hope will support these industries. For further information, please refer to the resources and references outlined on this slide. Australia's FTAs and agenda, DFAT public submission process on digital trade rules, Australia's international cyber engagement strategy, and Australia's tech future, which is Australia's domestic digital economy strategy. Thank you.